Engagement Ring by Dr. Elsewhere I am currently on a grocery store run. Lying to the love of my life was difficult, but it was the only thing I could think of before coming to a local coffee shop with free Wi-Fi. Honestly, I don't think she cares about where I am anymore. I knew I had to let someone know about my situation and see if anyone else has any advice. I'll give you the backstory first. I met Aaron two years ago through a mutual friend. We instantly hit it off as conversation was easy and laughs were plentiful. She was a very attractive blonde bombshell and being left out of the handsome gene pool myself, I knew she was way out of my league. After a few more encounters that went flawlessly, I mustered up the courage to ask her for a date. She said yes. Not long after we officially started dating, all the usual things happened. I met her family and friends, she met mine. I didn't like some of her friends and she didn't like some of my family. We laughed, we traveled, we kissed, we fought, we had sex, we said I love you, we talked about the future, and after two years of dating, the what-if scenarios transformed into reality. The odd thing about love is never knowing how it will happen. One day, in the middle of summer, we were driving back from a nice picnic, and she gave me a look. I knew she was letting every wall she had put up over 25 years of existence crumble down. Her blue eyes gave me a glimpse of her soul. I knew right then that I wanted to marry this woman. Luckily, luckily, the next weekend she was going to visit friends a few hours drive away, so it gave me plenty of time to look at engagement rings. Being on a very tight budget, Thanks to student loans, I shopped online for several hours, but everything was overpriced. I went in store to several locations, thinking a face-to-face -face would offer better deals, but I was wrong. As I walked out of the store, the look on my face must have been pathetic, since a stranger showed me some sympathy. He was probably 55, but looked 70. He stank and... His long white hair was growing towards his back from years of finger combing. Being so down, I needed any help I could get. He told me of a place downtown that sold nice jewelry at cheap prices. Assuming it was stolen property, I was hesitant, but before I could even ask, the stranger assured me it wasn't. For the next hour, I was inside the building where this nice but cheap jewelry was being sold. The business was a type of consignment or antique shop. After looking around briefly, I noticed in between the piles of junk were piles of damaged antiques. I had no idea how anyone would buy this garbage even if it was cheap. After asking the woman behind the counter about jewelry, a wooden tray was set in front of me full of rings, necklaces, and earrings. As I was digging around the tray, the green velvet piece under the merchandise shifted and a sparkle caught my eye. After lifting up the velvet, I grabbed a ring that had been hidden out of sight. The diamond was huge, especially for my budget, and the filigree along the band was intricate. I knew the rings Aaron owned slipped comfortably around my pinky. So after a quick test, I knew it would fit. For some reason, the woman gave me an odd look when I asked for the price. Five hundred dollars later, the ring was mine. Over the next few months, I planned the proposal. It went perfect. She said yes as the sun was setting over our favorite lake, which was then followed by her close family and friends celebrating the occasion. Me, the goofy introvert, got the woman of my dreams. The next few days were euphoric. We'd wake up happy and go to bed happy. She was a secretary at a law firm and would always joke to her friends about how much she loved typing now because she gets to stare at her ring all day. 
I was proud, knowing I had found an amazing ring for such a great deal. However, the third day after the proposal is when I started noticing her change in behavior. That morning, I got out of bed before her as usual. After a quick shower, I was brushing my teeth when I saw Erin roll over in her sleep. Her feet were covered in something black, like ash. Normally a light sleeper, she didn't answer when I asked about it. I left the house and went to work, not thinking about it again until I came home. She was still lying in bed. I was gone from 7 in the morning until 5.30 in the afternoon. Once again, I asked if she had showered, gone to work, or eaten anything, but was again met with silence. Assuming she was sick, I made her some soup. Vegetable beef, her favorite. But upon bringing her the bowl, I saw her standing by the bed. Her hair was matted to her head while partially covering her face. She stared at me like she was confused over who I was. She wouldn't eat the soup or even speak to me. She just looked around our bedroom then went back to sleep. At this point I was worried, but knowing the next day was Saturday, I assumed we could work out our problems then. The next morning, I woke to the sound of her showering. A brief conversation later informed me that she had no recollection of the past day. I wanted her to see a doctor, but she put the blame on a strong cold. The rest of the day was typical as we watched Netflix, cooked lunch, checked our blogs, and played with our cat. We discussed possible plans for a wedding, and she reminded me of how beautiful her ring was. Everything went smoothly for another week before she started acting strange again. I woke up in the middle of the night to an empty spot beside me. I walked around the house looking for Aaron, then heard a faint whisper coming from the spare bedroom. Listening through the cracked door, I could hear her whispering to herself. Through sickness and in health, through sickness and in health, through sickness and in health. She kept saying that phrase over and over. I never knew her to sleepwalk, but assuming as much, I opened the door, only to find her burning her hand on a candle flame. I got her attention by clicking the light on. She turned her neck and stared. The smell of her burning skin was strong, but she kept her hand in the flame while staring. Those beautiful blue eyes were now gray and unfamiliar. Before I could take a step towards her, she blew the candle out and sprinted out of the room. I chased after her, but she quickly stopped in the middle of the living room. I kept asking what was wrong and if she was okay. She only stared at me again before letting out a violent scream. During her scream, every fire alarm in the house went off. I spent the next few hours turning off the alarms, helping Erin to bed after wrapping her hand and debating whether or not to call her family. If she had any history of sleepwalking or, worse, harming herself, I should have known about it. Before I had the time to call, I smelled smoke. I ran to the bedroom where Erin was sleeping, but there was nothing. I approached my fiancé, though, and was overcome with the smell of smoke. My eyes watered, and there was a taste of soot in my mouth. I checked everywhere, but there was no fire source for the smell. It was coming from Aaron. Afraid to leave her alone, I called in sick to work the next morning. She spent five hours staring at her ring. Every attempt at conversation was fruitless. Without any warning, she just starts screaming and clawing at the walls like she was in pain. Her whispers became inaudible. The last few nights, I barely slept, so a nap I took was unavoidable. For three hours, Aaron was alone, and I had no idea what she did until I woke up. 
I woke up to the sound of another fire alarm. Yet this time, I saw smoke. The source was easy enough to trace. The oven. As I made my way to the kitchen, I realized every wall was covered in ashy handprints. Fearing Erin had squeezed herself into the oven, I flung open the door, and a burst of smoke covered my sight. I heard snickering behind me, and Erin burst into laughter as I saw my charred cat gasping for breath. In a rage, I tried removing the ring from her finger, but Erin pushed me away with ease. My second attempt left my hands burnt. The ring was scorching hot and left blisters on my fingers and palms, but somehow the skin on Aaron's ring finger is unscathed. Yesterday, Aaron started carrying a lit candle with her around the house. I noticed new burns on her skin every few hours. I've begged her to stop, but I'm only answered with screams or inaudible whispers. She doesn't sleep anymore. The house smells like a campfire and burnt flesh. Her eyes are so distant. I love this woman, but I'm afraid that the soul I once took comfort in is gone. Last night, she stayed in the living room, staring at her ring while whispering to herself. Choosing to sleep, I drifted off at midnight, only to be woken up an hour later by Aaron, standing over me with a lit candle. I have a feeling that I woke up just in time, before she set my bed sheets on fire. I don't know for certain if she would hurt me, but the look on her face was of indifference. I left this morning while she went back to staring at her ring. I haven't slept more than eight hours in three days. I fear for my life and the health of my fiancé. I've been thinking about why this is happening and my only conclusion is the ring. Before contacting our family, I, I wanted to reach out and see if anyone has any advice on what I could do or how this ring is causing problems.